Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. Over the weekend, we talked about barking. We talked about the origin of barking and how barking has actually helped mankind live with dogs and dogs live with mankind. Many, many functions can occur from barking. You can motivate animals, you can motivate other humans. Barking is essential and it has survival value and therefore it's gonna be a little bit harder to control it. And notice I said the word control and I keep saying that because I don't see the need in extinguishing barking altogether, let alone is it even a possibility. So we really shouldn't head down that road. I think we can incur a lot more problems and a lot more stress trying to eliminate something that has uh, what we call survival value, but also it's a necessary means of communication for today's dogs, not so much for their ancestors, wolves, but definitely for today's dogs. So let's talk about controlling it. Yesterday, we talked about using a long line, attaching a long line to our dogs and creating a haptic signal that would go with the auditory signal. We say quiet, we give tug. In the beginning, we just disrupt the behavior because it takes a while for the animal to learn what the heck does the word quiet mean. And then once it does, well, now I'm going to run to a cost-benefit analysis. Is there more of a benefit than a cost to barking? If there is, they'll continue to bark until the cost of barking far outweighs the benefit, then they'll shut it down. Now, tomorrow we'll go into more detail about problematic dogs with barking, dogs who could suffer, be suffering from either a mental illness type condition or just an abnormally high level of anxiety or fear. And that's what's driving that barking. And we kind of, we do the same thing, we just take a different route to get there. Okay, so some of you wrote in, hey, long line's hard, Brian. My dog chews up my long line. My dog drags my long line all over the house. I can only have it on my dog when I'm home, and when I'm not home, my dog barks his head off, at least according to my neighbors. So guess what? We can use electronics. Yes, last week I talked a lot about the remote training collar. We can use electronics to help us touch our dogs. Because that's what you're doing when you yank on a long line. I don't care what kind of collar it's attached to, whether it be a flat buckle collar, a Martindale collar, prong collar, compression collar, you name it. When you say quiet, you yank and you start to yank harder and harder and harder to convince the animal who now understands what bark means. But again, run it through a cost benefit analysis has determined, you know what? Yeah, you're tugging me, but I tell you what, I still feel like I really need to bark. So I'm gonna go ahead and bark anyway. And you just keep dialing that thing up, up, and up. Well, guess what? Again, I told you yesterday, try to teach this from afar. I'm not going to allow you to get reinforcement by calling me to you. I'm going to go ahead and give you a signal that says, hey, appreciate the bark, but shut it down. And I, I like my alarm system, but I've determined there's no need for the alarm to continue to go off. So I need you to turn that thing off now. A lot of you are working from home Nowadays, uh, so many reasons that you just cannot have a dog barking in the background while you're trying to conduct business over a virtually like we're doing right now. So I love the electronic means for controlling barking. The remote caller, as we talked about last week, is an incredible device to get that thing done. And here's a couple of pros about it. Uh, one thing about the remote caller versus the bark caller, the bark caller, the dog controls the bark caller. And I'll talk about in a second, what is a bark caller? But the remote control, the remote caller is more you control it. You control it. So in other words, you would give the dog the command quiet. And my sound machine's not working, but it was working just a second ago. So let me try now. There we go. So the you would initiate this, especially if you were using a long line. Here's how I get it done with my own personal dogs and the way I've recommended for thousands of clients over the years. Start off with a long line first, whether you like it or not. I just do. I just want to make sure that the animal knows, hey, that was me. That quiet command came from me, didn't come from the other dog, didn't come from the next door neighbor, didn't come from the living room that you're standing in or that front door. That signal came from me. And the best way to communicate that to a dog is be tethered to them. Yeah, it doesn't take a real rocket science to go bark, Quiet, look down the line and you're tugging. Oh, did you just do that to me? Yes, it was, that was me. All right, so now we do the same thing. So on one hand, 
We have the long line. We've been doing long line training on the command quiet now for a couple of days. And again, that could be stretched out longer depending upon how many opportunities you get to even train it. If no one comes by, your dog never barks for any reason whatsoever, this could take a long time. But then again, at the end of the day, you probably don't have a problem. All right, so I've been working this for a couple days, going quiet, tug, quiet, tug, quiet, tug. Now, like in last week, we have to do pairing. Pairing, this is a foreign sensation. So now at a level that the dog can just sense its presence, we go quiet, tug and press, quiet. Do it at the same time, tug and at the same time. Again, this level and that level may not be enough to stop the barking right now. It may only disrupt it temporarily, but we're building. Give me a couple of repetitions, probably about 25. Most dogs have kind of pulled that in with that. Now, I'm ready to let go of that because that's the beautiful thing about compound signals. Compound signals allow you to have an either or situation. So a haptic signal is a haptic signal. I just remove the tether. I remove the long line. Now when I go quiet, the dog looks back at me. Yep, that was me. Just like that long line. Remember they used to come together? Well, the long line decided to take the day off. I gave you the electronic haptic signal. So now the dog does pair it with you. Yes, that's me. Beautiful, because now all you have to do from that point forward is quiet, dog keeps barking. Okay, well, I do have 100 levels on here. So let me just go up a couple of them. Nope, let's go a couple more. Sweet, that works. Then learn. Whatever level that was under that condition that immediately made the dog go, okay, I'm good. Uh, you just deal with it. You deal with it. I don't want to deal with that. I'll just be quiet. Hey, learn, learn. So that means tomorrow, for example, if it was level 10 on this device, then tomorrow dear old Brian's going to start with level 10, not the level three or four or five that I may have started with. I'm going to go and go there because my dog just trained me. And then expect this. With any remote collar training, any remote collar training, I don't care what you're using it to train your dog to do, they will slowly habituate to the signal. And when they do, you'll be required by the rules of semiotics to raise the signal. Yeah, and under certain conditions, remember they're gonna go further up that arousal column. And the further they go up, the more of a different stimulus it's going to take to disrupt that. And I'll talk about that more tomorrow. So this gives you the opportunity to do that by simply increasing the level until you achieve, till you're just right there, until the cost is just parked above the benefit. No more, no less. Every dog is different. So you got a wide range, a wide choice. But here's the beautiful thing. Now you can be upstairs in your office on a video conference. You hear bark, 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 quiet. Thank you very much. And then eventually bark, 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 quiet. Oh, oh, my dog was quiet. I didn't need to press the button. And that's where it grows. You've seen Captain many times on these videos. Oh, he does bark. You come up to my house and he's going to come to that door like a freight train. I like that. It's a big glass door. Any bad guys come peering in my house, they're gonna see a 55 pound silver bullet coming at them. I dig that. I was a police canine officer. I understand the power of dogs and what they can do to keep bad people from coming on your property. However, if I identify that person is not a bad guy, but it's my friend, if I give him the, the command quiet, done, just like that, done. And he's learned along the way that nothing bad ever happens to him. I control the situation. I control the barking. I control the situation, social support. I've got this thing. You don't need to worry about it. Okay, remote caller does that. If you've got questions on that, send them to me. Now, there's a condition when you're not home. Good luck pressing a button on a remote caller if you're not home. 
but your neighbors keep giving you feedback. Man, dude, I love you, but I'm telling you what, your dog barked all day long. I was working out from my home. I can't concentrate. The list goes on and on. So now you need something that presses the button for you. And that's what's known as a bark collar. The bark collar works independently of your input. So it's a great tool for when you're away. If you ever train a dog on a bark collar, do me a favor. Make sure you go a couple of days with this thing on your dog while you're home. The dog can be put out back or whatever while you're home. Okay, here's a cool thing about, remote, uh, about bark collars. Uh, first of all, they have many levels, many levels. So just like the remote collar, if you need to raise the signal, you have that capability. Number two, they give a learning curve. They work off a of sound, sound only, so the dog can eat, can sleep, can scratch, can, can do anything and everything as long as it doesn't bark. If it barks, it'll send a quick vibration, and then it'll send the electrical stem. And it starts off on level one, it works its way all the way up to level eight. You may never have to go to eight, depends on the dog. The other cool thing that it does is that if the dog barks and it's corrected for barking by this device, no matter if it continues to bark afterwards, it won't give it the stimulus again for 15 more seconds. And that's way cool because I remember back about 20, 30 years ago, it didn't do that. Every time you barked, it corrected you. And so the dog would bark, get corrected, go, ah, what was that? Gets corrected again. Oh, no, now we're in a vicious spiral downward. Nowadays, it doesn't do that. It gives the animal time to process. Bark. Hey, what was that? What the heck was that? And then all of a sudden, bark, 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 bark. There goes, what? They start to figure it out. I've never had any dog that we've ever used, that I've ever recommended a bark collar, that the owners come back and give me feedback two days later saying it didn't work. Because it does work. It really does. And another nifty thing that wasn't an, an intended consequence is this. So this is rechargeable, waterproof, rechargeable, you name it, just like a lot of your remote train collars. But here's the cool thing. So a lot of dogs become collar savvy. They do. And they can certainly become the same thing with a remote collar, but you work your way through that thing. But with this, I actually like that because I cannot tell you how many dogs you can put this thing on, not even, don't even turn it on. Don't even bother. When this is on, I'm quiet. Yep, that's me. Quiet dog I am. Take it off, I can bark. And then you can go back to, I control it now. You control it when the collar's on. I control it when the collar's not off. So there you have really no chance of creating a or de-barking your dog. I simply just don't bark under this condition. And life at its most fundamental level can be described as nothing more than you attempting to adjust to any change in your condition. So when this condition changes, I adjust. I just, just quiet. I just am. So you don't have to charge it up, even if the darn thing breaks. Still works. Still works. So bark collar is a really cool tool. Uh, I cannot tell you how many people save themselves from being evicted out of apartments, uh, homes that they're renting. How many dogs were not sent to rescues and shelters, not booted, not kicked to the curb, because the owners were able to control barking when they were away. So a really neat device, works really well. There's some precautions you have to take with it, but th those are pretty much addressed in any of the owner's manuals. Things like don't put it on too tight, make sure you check your dog's neck. Anytime you have metal rubbing skin, you, you can create the condition known as pressure necrosis. A lot of common sense application. It will require you to get some feedback from it. That's why I recommend only using it for the first couple of days while you're home. Maybe the dog doesn't know you're home, you're just kind of spying on it but you, you, something causes it to bark, find out. You may find that level one doesn't work. Yeah, it worked initially, but now the dog's going, okay, <laughs> whatever that is, I can handle it. I need to bark. So that's when you know how to turn it up to two. Then the dog goes, yeah, two, two, two's more, but you know what, I can still handle it. So now you turn it up to three, turn it up to four, until finally the dog goes, uncle, I'm good. I'll just be quiet. There you go. So you never even have to go to that high level. 
So again, I just want to cover today, there's a couple of electronic means to bark it. The, uh, that you can control it in so many ways, when you're home, when you're not home. You know, and I also wrote just a couple of cons real quick on the bark collar before I forget to go over them. Uh, here's one of the cons. It can be activated by the sound of a different dog. So if your dog does a lot of fence fighting with the neighbor's dog, rawr, 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 rawr. well, if they approach the fence where this device, they're perfectly quiet. That dog is inches away, literally the distance between chain link or a privacy fence. If that dog has a loud thunderous bark, woo, 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 it can set off your dog's collar. So watch out for that. So therefore, under those conditions, a remote collar is better. Uh, if you're going to have to be gone away from your home, then probably best just to put the dog up. The other thing can happen is that a lot of owners forget that the dog's wearing it. They do. They, they, they're so used to putting it on Monday through Friday. They go to work. They put it on. They forget. And then they come on and go, oh, how was your day? And the dog goes, burnt up. And then they go, oh, that's bad, my bad. Yeah, you can start playing with your dog and cause your dog to get really excited, with chase a ball, play with you, starts to bark, and all of a sudden gets corrected for it. That's a bad situation. It happens. If it does happen to you, learn from it. Learn from it. And then you'll be perfectly fine. Okay, guys, that's it for electronic means of controlling your barking. Heck, man, give it a shot. Start easy. Make sure you pair with the remote collar. That thing will do its own pairing by itself. You don't need to worry about doing any pairing at all with the bark collar. That's why it teaches it every 15 seconds. It gives a little lag. It does its own pairing. So don't worry about it. Dog will learn. Okay, if you have any questions on remote training collars for barking or bark collars for barking, send them my way. And of course, if you found this information beneficial, you think someone could use it, if your neighbor could use it because they have the problem, dog, send it to them. Send it to them and tell them, I'm sending it to you. Brian sent it to you with love. Okay? Try to work it out and be a nice neighbor. I'll check you guys out tomorrow because we'll be talking about what are some of the reasons that dogs bark outside of all those I've mentioned up to this point. You'll want to tune in for that if you think you have a reactive dog. Okay, guys, be safe until then. Check you out tomorrow.